All right, I'm going to create a loom on how third grade creates their common formative assessments for math. Um, I always start off by going to my canvas. And uh, since we're doing math, I'm going to click on math. I'm always going to create a quiz for this because it gives us a lot of good statistics at the end of it. So I create, I click quizzes. Uh, to create one, I'm going to add quiz, top right blue. You're going to name your quiz. Uh, third grade, we always tag ours with HP for high priority. And then assessment, uh, I'll just go with one, grade three. We always tag the grade to it also. In the description, um, I like to put down, you know, grab a piece of paper to work out your problems, take your time. But we also like to tag the I can statements from, uh, from our standard. So I always go to find out what our standard is. And for assessment one, it was three NS1. So I go to the IDOE and I'll actually, I'll go back step by step on how you get to the I can statements just in case. But you're gonna to go to the IDOE, you're going to hit state standards. You're going to come down to math 2020. And you're going to click math framework and after math framework you're going to search your grade level and whatever your content area will be uh, ours is number sense so i click number sense apply then it will bring up all your standards for number sense uh, we're doing three ns1 for number one so i'll hit that and then that will bring up your i can statements i usually just copy and paste it right into our um, right into our quiz. So after you copy and paste that, then you're going to have to set a date for when it is due. Um, whatever day we take it, I usually give it a good three or four day buffer just in case kids are not there that day or they're gone for a while. So always give it a buffer, but you can always go in, edit and change this due date. Um, if you have a kid out for 10 days and he's not going to be back for a while, you can always bump it to when they're going to be back. Uh, then I always make it available that day that we're taking the quiz. After you get all that set up, then you're going to want to create your questions. Uh, creating your questions, uh, you can do it in a, a multiple different ways. I usually use multiple choice, true, false, or I'll use numerical answer. If you're doing multiple choice, it's pretty pretty simple. Put in your question, have four options. You can make it less options if you'd like. And then you click the green arrow for the correct answer. Uh, when you're done, you can click new question. It'll bring up a new platform for you. If you're doing a numerical answer, if you're doing it for math, they're going to give you four options already, no matter what. I always just trash can everything except for one of them. I put in my whatever my numerical question would be. So if I was doing 12 plus 5 equals... And then I would put in my answer right here, 17. There's always a margin here. I, I always leave that zero. So that it's just 17 is the answer. Anything less or more is going to be wrong. And then whenever you're done, I like to hit update question so that it saves that question just in case something happens while you're on. Uh, to find out what questions I want to include in my quiz, I go through the IDOE. On that same page, there's a spot called Clarifying Examples and Digital Resources. It says click here. I usually click, and then it will bring up some different options for you, different ways to look at the questions. Um, it brings up resources for you to use. That's So I, I start there to find out uh, what types of questions I need to be asking the kids, and then I use trusty uh, Google to find everything else that I need throughout whatever we're doing. So I'll show you an example. Uh, actually, after you're done with your quiz then, after you've published it, then you will end up having a screen that looks like this when you click on your quiz. I'll find our first one, uh, HP Assessment 1. So after you've done everything, this would be all that description stuff where you put your I can statements, I put the standard and what we need to do. Um, dates and everything else. So if you want to see what the questions look like, these are what the questions look like as a multiple choice. Um, 
use Google for images if you if you need to have an image for them to look at. And then this is what the numerical answers would look like where they plug in their answers here. And then when you are all done, when you are at the main page, so after you publish, you'll be looking at an assignment like this. You're going to hit the three dots, go down to share to commons. And then once you hit share to commons, um, you're going to click all of Lewis cast so that all of Lewis cast can see it. And then you are going to have to do a couple things. It'll already have the title for you, but you have to put in an, a description. I always just put what the standard is we're covering and you have to click an image. So you just press click image and then you search for an image. It has a whole data database of images for you to choose from. And then you have to set what grade level it's for. I always make it for second through fifth. That way, um, if a teacher has second grader who's advanced, wants to try this out, they can, or if you have anybody in fourth or fifth grade that needs to revisit some of these standards, you could also do that too. And then you update or click save. After you've given the quiz, uh, what I like about this is that you can go into quiz statistics. So my kids have already taken HP assessment one, so I click quiz statistics. And it'll bring me in and it breaks down what your average score was, your high score, your low score, uh, your standard deviation, average time spent on the test. And then what I like even more about it is that it'll break down with each question. And I can tell exactly who answered what for each question. That way, when you have your kids that did not score that 80% that, that our goal is, then you can go back and meet with them on each individual question and, and really remediate and get them where they need to be for the second go around. Other than that, that is what we do as a third grade team to uh, – to give our common formative math assessments. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff you can do with Canvas, but I figured this would be the best one to put on Loom since that's what we're kind of focusing on as an elementary. Thank you for listening.